of the grass species in here, um, I was reluctant to go too much with a lot of ryegrass, mostly because it's a reasonably competitive plant and from my understanding that's what can reduce the persistence of some of the other plants that I want in here, i.e. they're having to compete quite hard so if we can reduce some of that competition with the grass species in theory that should help. Um, also because it's quite a dry field I wanted species that would be well suited to, particularly in these kind of slightly drier conditions too. Um, as a sheep producer I was quite hesitant about putting any coxfoot in, but there is a little bit of coxfoot in it. Time will tell if I would do it this again, if I were to do this again, if I would keep coxfoot in, but it, it definitely provides a function. It's really good at growing in these dry conditions. It has a really good root system. So when you think of it in terms of its function, it's really good, but it obviously lacks a bit of palatability, um, particularly for sheep. Festulolium, that's the first time I've used festulolium here, which is a ryegrass um, and fescue hybrid. Um, it's quite short-lived but reasonably productive. Um, palatability of that I think seems to be okay so that seems to be working. And Timothy, Timothy works well on this farm. I tend to normally have it on the slightly heavier fields. That's always a good species to have in. And I've also got some meadow fescue in here um, which generally should have a bit of winter hardiness. Um, I wouldn't have said it looks very competitive in here so maybe just not the perfect grass for me in this field. Um, so they were the grasses. In terms of the herbs, I have got chicory and plantain, and there is also yarrow in there as well. I've been using herbal lays for a good few years. I'm probably at least eight, nine years um, that I've been using them here now. Yarrow, I found, can over-dominate over time. It actually is one of the herb species that prefers to be quite heavily grazed. So if you reduce that little bit of grazing intensity on your swords, I think it, it can over-dominate. But maybe it's my soils, maybe it's my soil type. Um, so there's only a small bit of yarrow in here, but it has a phenomenal um, root structure. So it's providing some of those soil health benefits in there as well. Um, plantain, love plantain, sheep love plantain. It's, it's an awesome plant to have in. It's really palatable. And it's one of these ones with the higher selenium um, iodine content. Chicory the same. Sheep seem to love the chicory. That seems to be going okay. It's one of the harder ones to keep to persist. I think there's a, um, the New Zealanders always say that you'll never have more chicory in your sword than the day you sow it. So I think that's true, um, but how we manage it to try and keep it going as long as possible. And what other, birds for trefoil as well is, um, this is shifting more towards the legumes now. So birds for trefoil, that's there because it's a really awesome plant. It's one of the ones that scores really highly on anthelmintic benefits. Um, it's um, a good source of protein. It's really palatable. Allegedly as well, it can help reduce methane, although I think the stock would probably have to be eating the sole diet with that. It's actually related to lucerne. I wouldn't grow lucerne here. Um, lucerne really um, needs a more alkaline soil, so pH is here sit so round about 5.8. I think it would be a struggle to get lucerne to, to persist here, even though it's, it's an awesome plant and yields a lot more than the bird's foot trefoil. I just think the trefoil is much more suited to our Scottish soils and our Scottish climate as well. Um, so that's in there as a legume. The other key legumes, there is some white clover in here um, and also I have red clover and alcyke clover as well um, running through. So they're, they're also awesome feed. They're really palatable um, really um, you generally get really good production off of um, having all these clovers in the mix as well. And they're there to provide the nitrogen. Um, and also just having that mix of the clover type. So the, the red clover is obviously tap rooted. So it's, it's managing to get its roots a bit deeper um, than the white clover. But all these legumes in particular are, they're flowering, what are we? We're now um, nearly middle of July. So they're busy flowering and they're buzzing with bees. So there's that additional benefit coming from there with that, with that biodiversity benefit. So they're doing my ground good, stock love them and they're yeah, providing food source for pollinate, pollinators. Alcite clover comes from Sweden um, and there seems to be debate. I actually don't think it is hybrid. It looks a little bit like a cross between a, a white clover and a red clover, but I think apparently it, it, it probably is a, more a native clover. So obviously coming from Sweden, it's going to be quite well suited to our farm systems. It, it's 
a lot more tolerant of acid soils and of wetter soils. So maybe not my perfect field to have it. I'll definitely be trying it in one of the heavier fields in, when I get reseed. Um, but it's it's well suited to our climate. Um, and I think that's part of this. Is it's it's a challenge in managing these herbal lays and it's a slightly different way of thinking. But I think it's really important that we use plants that are really well suited. And, you know, if you look at our, our hedgerows, um, our verges and things, I think they give us real good clues as to what plants are gonna, gonna grow well here. So I certainly try and take cues, cues from that as well. Mm -hmm.